Do you know what a fracassi freak is? Well, go on, put the kitties to bed, make yourself a bologna sandwich, come on back in, take a seat, and we're gonna talk about fracassi freaks. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I do truly appreciate it. And it is, uh, I got a box full of Philip Fracassi stuff you can see here my fricasse collection is growing. Things are gonna have to change. It looks like we're gonna have to find someplace else for William Peter Blatty to go live. God rest, but great author. I'm just running out of space. Gotta find a place and fricasse stuff is growing. One of my favorite authors walking God's green earth is a fellow by the name of Philip Fricasse. And the Fricasse Freaks comes from a Facebook collector group people collecting Philip Fricasse stuff, reading Philip Fricasse stuff, all that kind of stuff. A few people made a Facebook group in which Philip Fricasse participates regularly. Also, Philip Fricasse has a Patreon account, and I am what they call a Sabbath resident, which I don't know all the ins and outs, but it's kind of a cool ring to it, and I'm glad to be in. However... As part of the Patreon deal, as well as a Kickstarter deal that went on, I got a box full of books in the mail from Philip Fracassi. And you can't ever have anything happy without having something worrisome along with it. The friendly neighborhood mail lady and her co-workers, they treated my package poorly. And I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm concerned because I'm looking forward to some of this stuff. So let's just stop ch ch chatting. Let me take a look and see what happens inside the box. Because at the end of the day, it's not the box I'm buying. It is the contents. The box is just there to help make sure the contents are spick and span in that top flight condition in which I expect or hope for as a collector. Let me get through this tape. I just can't get it open fast enough to see what's going on in here. Hopefully, I got enough cushioning or something to help make sure my stuff's not all busted up. But in the box, covered up in paper here, and uh, I got books in bubble wrap, and maybe, maybe with the cushion paper, I survive. But I'm gonna take this out. I'll show you the stuff one at a time. Quite frankly, I'm not even sure what's in here. I just know there's some cool stuff. So let's take this, open it up, and I'm gonna set it down right here. Just a second, and don't worry. Be happy, I'll show you what I got. And the very first thing comes in a little Ziploc bag with a number 56 on top. It is a chat book, and I requested 56 because I've got 56 of Alter, and I've got 56 of the other one. What's it called? What's the other one called? Shoot. I should have looked that up. But the other one's right over here. Let me see if I can find it. Nero. I remembered it before I found it. Nero. Two other chapbooks from Philip Fracassi that I've got. And let me show you what this one is. A new. I think these are... These are available to the general public. Uh, the Patreon subscribers got each got one, and then I think they were offered up for sale to the Fracassi Freaks, and then the remaining copies will be sold otherwise. But before I move on, here is one heck of a signed book plate that I am so excited about. Philip Fracassi, 2024. Man, it looks good. I'm excited, excited. So let me, let me get back to this. Dave Dick illustrations. Let me verify, make sure that I'm correct on that. I think, but sometimes I think, and it comes out poorly. Cover and interior illustrations by Dave Dick. Cover and interior design by Paul Michael Kane. I heard of that guy before from 19th edition, but just take a look once again at the, the artwork on the cover of that chat book. There's the way it is bound whatever that is called. And then on the back, <laughs> the title's on the back. I think my tree house is haunted, Philip Fracassi. But man, that's neat. It's gonna, I'm, I'm expecting to get, end up getting quite a few of these chat books because I think the Patreon subscription, it's gonna be a somewhat 
regular thing. It's been published by Alter Publishing in an edition of 250 copies. Each copy has been signed and numbered by the author. Number 56, Lawrence Taylor. I just requested that, like I said. Because my other chat books have the same number and matching numbers is cool. And there's the the frontispiece. Uh, see what else. See what else we got in here. I don't know. Illustrations inside. Wow, look at here. So more than I expected when I whipped this thing out, I was expecting a cool looking signed limited edition chat book, but I guess I wasn't paying enough attention. It's chock full of interior illustrations. Philip Fricasse is also a book collector. So you would hope, some two color printing there, you would hope, you would think that a book collector would also know how to take care of collectors. Another advantage here, but this chat book is show enough getting it done man the artwork is cool it looks so cool and it's full of it man just full of it i'm excited the chat book itself is worth the price of admission looks so good it is so exciting let me see i'm gonna spend all day just showing you the illustrations in this one chat book here but golly look at here i recommend go uh, break out the phone or the computer or the ipad or whatever the device you use mash them buttons Look up Philip Fricasse, figure out how to get on board with that Patreon, and sign up. Sign up. Also, go to the Facebook if you should so choose. Become a Fracasi freak. Now, there are more things in this bundle. And here is something that is exciting. It is screenplays of... Two books by Philip Fricasse. One is Boys in the Valley. Phenomenal book. I've shown you, I think I reviewed the book. I've shown you some awesome limited edition, trade edition, soft cover editions that I have of that. And then also Gothic. And I've got a few books like this where you start on one side and you've got uh, one thing. You start on the other side and you've got the other thing. So Gothic is in the back and, and Boys in the Valley is in the front but these are limited editions and honestly i don't remember the ins and outs of the two screenplays books but this was one that i had to have that i really did want here is the table of contents and uh so it'll also include it'll include the forward introduction to boys in the valley boys in the valley screenplay written 2014 boys in the valley screenplay written 2017 Introduction to Gothic, the Gothic screenplay, and bonus chapter. So go figure. This is a numbered edition. Two screenplays was printed in an edition of 250 copies with each edition signed and numbered by the author, Philip Fracasi. And he hooked me up with the number that I showed you in the other one, number 56. And gosh, I'm colorblind, but I almost think that signature looks a little bit grapeish to me. Purple sig. I don't know what color they're typically signed in, but the variation is cool. Thank you, Phil. When you're good friends with somebody, you can call them Phil if their name is Philip. If their name is Terrific, I don't know what you call them. Never met a guy named Terrific. My name's Timothy. What would you call a guy named Timothy? That's not nice. No. Anyway, awesome. Philip Fricasse has hooked a brother up, and this is one that I am excited for. No one is safe. The advanced reading copy, paperback, 312 pages, 23 bucks. Contact Steve Berman at Lathy Press at AOL.com. Cool, man. And this is another collection of stories of and such from Philip Fricasse. I've got a couple Philip Fricasse collections over here. Behold the void beneath the pale sky. And now no one is safe. And I got the Ark. Nice. <laughs> brag. I like to brag. You know, I'm excited to have the Ark in the collection. And it is signed. It looks purplish again by Philip Fricasse. Get the Philip Fricasse out. Strike through that. Signed and lined. Um, I've noticed authors over the years have done that. Some authors, not all. It's kind of cool. I don't understand it, though. It's cool. But I, you know, curiosity sometimes says, what is the original intent of that? How did that start? 
who started it, if that's even something you could possibly know. But what was the purpose? I know there's some things that I do today. I do them because I'd seen other people do them and I thought it was cool, but I don't know why they did it and I don't know why I do it. And that's kind of the signed and lined gimmick for me. I wonder what it actually truly means. You can tell me in the comments if you know. If you don't know, make something up. I like it when people make stuff up, especially when it's believable enough to where I think it's real and then I go tell everybody else it and I look like the idiot. That's that's cool stuff. <laughs> no, that's not that's not cool. Oh, uh, but here is our table of contents, otherwise known as talk. Table of contents. We have the wish, the last haunted house story, and I do love haunted house stories. I love haunted houses. I skipped school one time and spent the day in an old abandoned house. The second story had collapsed in on the first story and it was out in the woods and uh, a lot of people said it was haunted but i just had fun screwing around all day don't skip school you'll end up like me uh murder by proxy the rejects my father's ashes aquarium diver serial numbers overnight over one million copies in print autumn sugar marmalade the guardian the view and row so there's our table of contents uh, reading this book seems like it will be a delight. The printing is not so small and uh, it's spaced out well enough. No problems there. The color of the paper is a little bit creamy, not quite so bright, which is exactly what I like. So a neat, exciting addition. ARC, I didn't tell you what that is. Advanced Reading Copy. Some people collect these like nothing else. Uh, when a book comes out, Typically, before the book is actually available to the public, some publishers will produce ARCs and they'll make those to send out to folks that might do book reviews, uh, magazines, YouTube people, whatever. They'll send them out to folks so that they can read the book early and give them a review. And maybe by the time the book actually comes out, a little bit extra buzz can be created. And then other people, like Philip Fracassi, they're collectors, they know what collectors like, they know collectors like ARCs. So uh, he seems to be a guy that tries to get his fans ARCs because he wants to give his collecting fans stuff to collect. So this is a great opportunity. Again, the, uh, the Philip Fracassi Patreon, go check it out. Figure out what kind of a tier gets what. Sign up for the one that gets you what you want. You can get cool stuff such as this. And it looks like, it looks like I got one more thing in my package, another advanced review copy, not for sale. And this is an exciting one here because I think it's hard for me to say it because I love Boys in the Valley, but I think A Child Alone with Strangers is my favorite for Akasi book. I hate to say it because that means one that I love is not my favorite. But anyway, I kind of tend to say Child Alone with Strangers is my favorite, and I got the signed limited edition recently uh, from Levidian Publications. Beautiful. I showed you that video. Go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. That's Slipcase signed numbered edition. But here is another ARC, an advanced review copy, not for sale from Levidian Publications. And so we'll, we'll look through here and see what all is included. You want to read what's on the back. It'll have promotional material and things a lot of times on these ARCs to help you get in contact with publishers or to help you give that information out to other folks. So, hey, maybe I should do that. Read that stuff right there. See what she says. Get a halt of Levidian publications and such as that. But this was beautiful. The artwork from Francois Valancourt, one of my very favorite artists that there ever were, than there ever was. And Levidian Publications, one of my very favorite publishers. So this, this release right here, Really checked a lot, lots of boxes. Artist, author, publisher, opportunity. The ability to have enough money to be able to pay for that book when it was out, or when it was available. And it sold out, sold out very quickly. And let's take a look at this art. I'll show you. Again, signed and lined. Uh, looks purplish to me, but I'm colorblind if I'm wrong. You can correct me. Just please don't make too much fun. It's sad. A like, guy don't know what color what is, but it looks like purple to me. That's a song. Actually, there was a recently a chat book called Mr. Purple, wasn't there? I think I heard some people talking about that. Anyway, it wasn't Philip Fricasse is all I know. But let's look in this uh, 
this arc. One thing that it seems like, comparing it to my memory of the limited edition, the text size in this arc is pretty small. And that's, I guess, to be understood. When you're producing these books, they're not for sale. You, you want to be able to be able to read them, but you also know you're not selling the book. So all the money that goes into it is just pure loss. It's not a profit center at all. So perhaps you try to make it a little smaller, which means different typeset, font size, different papers, whatever. The purpose typically of an arc is for somebody to simply be able to read the book. But uh, in the past, a lot of times people would make arcs and they would look so plain, no, nothing on the, on the cover, just a plain, ordinary looking book with a title and stuff, solid color, covered, and <clears throat> definitely no illustrations or anything like that inside. So companies like Levidian making arcs that actually look good, and like we saw over there for uh, No One Is Safe, making arcs that look good, that's just bonus, man. Now you got something on the shelf that is desirable, that is collectible, that is rare. They don't print a bunch of them. I don't know how many arcs they made for this book, but I bet there's more, a lot more numbered edition copies than there are arcs. And then also to make them look good, because at the end of the day, where's this book going to go? It's going to go on my shelf, and I want the books on my shelf to look good. That's ideal, uh, always ideal if the books look good. You always have to first judge a book by the cover, and then you read it, and you can make final assessments at that point. But first impressions come from the cover usually. Anyway, I'm looking through here. I've shown you this artwork in the numbered edition. It's kind of hard to find it in the art, just flipping through, because the illustrations don't go all the way to the page edge. I'm not complaining. I'm just making an excuse. Everybody knows if you've got an excuse, it's not your fault, and then you're okay. It's all good as long as you've got a good excuse, right? Not really. But <laughs> I want to show you the artwork in here because Francois is my favorite, and I like, uh, I like to see his work. And the illustrations in this book really help to tell the story. So if you haven't read the story, there could be considered spoilers. There's one picture that truly is a spoiler. And I'll, uh, I think I showed it on the other video. And if you want to see it, I'll warn you before I show it, if I can even find it. There's one picture in here that's a true spoiler, but we haven't found it yet. But typically illustrations in books, they're only spoilers if you already know the story. And then looking back, you say, oh, that tells about that thing. But people wouldn't have any context or any understanding of it if they hadn't read the story. But there is one in here that gives some stuff away. Uh, this is, uh, well, I guess this could be a spoiler if you look close enough. It's got something to it, but there you go. I'll show it to you. And if you didn't cover your eyes... Well, don't pay too close attention. There's one more in here that is spoiler, and I'll say, er, er, spoiler alert when I get to it. And here it is, er, er, spoiler alert when I get to it. There you go. But spoiler because you don't know what you're dealing with until now you do. And uh, man, I, I'm glad to see that picture because you get to read the book and you develop a picture in your mind based on what the author says. But a good artist or illustrator, they'll study them words really, really closely to try to make the picture really, truly fit what the words are. Um, eliminating preconceived notions and such as that. But I love that, that particular image. And then also included is an additional story, Hot Red Dress, written and printed exclusively for this edition. So if you've already read A Child Alone with Strangers, getting the Levidian Publications version, you get an additional story. So here is, here is my haul, y'all. Lots of cool stuff from Philip Fracassi. He has hooked a brother up, some good books, a good chapbook, a good signed thing. What do they call them? Book plate, a good signed book plate, and a great haul. And even though the, the co-workers of the friendly neighborhood mail lady, because I trust her, 
she didn't do it. She delivered what them other people messed up. Even though they kind of treated my box harshly, it came through. Good packaging, that paper around the edges helped to stop things from getting busted up when it was like that. And then the bubble wrap, of course, also helped. So it all went together to get me my stuff. It's a happy ending. I'm excited to have this stuff on the shelf. I got my work cut out for me though, because I got to do moving around. I already told you, I got to find a place for William Peter Blatty, who I do truly love. The Exorcist is phenomenal, but my friend just running out of room for Cosby's taking over. And with that being said, I got no more lies to tell. So thank you for your time. I do truly appreciate it. Say la vie. Baby. Doo -doo. Well, my work is done. I've got him in. Poor William Peter Blatty had to go find him a new home. He's got a nice, comfortable spot on the shelves. A place of honor still, the respect he deserves. But Fracassi has his own shelf for the first time in my collection. You'll see some dupes in there, but not many. Not many at all. They're all variations except for uh, three examples. Three examples is all very pleased. Well worth the effort. Thank you, Phil.